my name is Daniel Morissette from MapGears. Uh, I'll be talking about uh, a new map HTML element uh, that is being implemented in Map Server. Uh, that's a new spec that's being worked on, as you'll see. It's, as I said, I'm going to try to keep it lightweight. Uh, we Actually, I'm going to answer the questions that I had myself when I was introduced to that spec. Why do we want another spec? What problem is it solving? And uh, then a little bit of what it is actually, what it is looking like. So uh, there's a second author, other on the presentation, who is Peter Rashford from Natural Resource Canada. Peter was one of the instigators of that specification. He's working in the W3C, the World Wide Web Consortium, and in OGC with different stakeholders on that stuff. In my case, my involvement has been the implementation, the implementation side. So I'm not an expert of the spec itself. I will talk about it from the perspective of someone who's using it and implementing it. So uh, implementing it in Map Server and then also in GDAL and OGR. That's uh, stuff that's coming soon. So I'm going to use this. So as I said, why does the world need another spec? Why do we need MapML? So that's the first question I asked Peter when he talked to me about this thing. And uh, I realized that the idea is that because it's just simply because dealing with maps on the web is easy for us, GIS people, but it's kind of hard for the average web, web, web developer. You know, people who are used to building websites, HTML, CSS, and that normal Java. Well, first of all, it, it does involve writing JavaScript code, but not just writing JavaScript code, actually selecting a JavaScript API and then writing custom JavaScript code for it. So whether you choose something like a proprietary API like uh, Google Maps, for instance, or even if you use an open API like uh, Leaflet or Open Layers, you still have to write custom code and understand the logic of that code to be able to add a map to a simple map to your web page. And uh, even though it looks trivial, you can copy and paste stuff, but uh, uh, you know, well, there, there's that. There's the, the fact that you need to understand the syntax and all of that. Plus, once you think you're done, well, now you need to plan for your next update because of deprecated APIs, because there are new devices that were not supported by the version of the library that you use, or new browser features, that type of stuff. So you're constantly upgrading and retouching that code. Every couple of years, you have to retouch the code, whatever you've used as, as a starting point. So imagine a world where adding an HTML a map to an HTML page is as simple as this, as, as simple as adding a video tag. And if you remember a few years ago, Adding a video to a page involved the Flash plugin or other custom solutions, but now in HTML there is a video tag, so all you need to do is add, add those, those few lines, and the browser is going to take care of the rest. So that's the idea. So imagine a map tag, a map HTML element that would do all of that job for us. So I'm cat compliant. <laughs> uh, so yeah, essentially the idea of MapML is to have a map. HTML element and to make it easy for web people to just add a map and to hide all the complexity behind the specification which is handled by the software. So imagine a map HTML element that's built into the browser, no JavaScript library, that's supported by all the browsers and devices so you don't need to, to worry about device compatibility. That's an established standard so there's no more deprecated API upgrades and stuff. Once you've deployed your HTML page it will continue to work. That's leveraging existing map standards, so it's not reinventing the wheel. So if you have tile services, WMS, WFS, whatever, they will work. That's dumb friendly, so if you're a web person, you're going to feel at home. You'll be able to go and dive and play with the features on the map and uh, really uh, yeah, manipulate the map information, but in a dumb way, in the, the way you would manipulate the rest of the stuff in your HTML page. That's compatible with both static and dynamic map contents. And in the end, that's also easier for search bots, search bots to find an index because there would be one syntax, not five JavaScript syntax that you would need to analyze if you were a search bot, search bot trying to index contents. So we can dream. It's a big list. It's a big shopping list. Uh, and uh, MapML is one first step in that direction. So that's where we're at right now. Uh, MapML is... If that's the take-home slide. If you have to take a picture, that's the one. There's three things to remember. MapML is a work in progress. There's currently a draft specification. It, the work is led by a, an, a, a, war, a community group at the W3C, but also with joint people from the OGC as well. 
And the spec really is composed of two pieces. There's the HTML map element, the actual map element that you put in the HTML page that looks pretty much like the video element that I was looking at earlier. And then there's a map markup language, which is the way the server tells the browser how to deal with the map. So we'll look at those two pieces a little more later in the presentation. So the community group, just to give you a bit of history, uh, this whole thing started in March 2014 when uh, uh, Peter proposed this at the joint W3C and OGC linking spatial data workshop. At the moment, the chair of uh, the working, the community group, not working group, the W3C community group is are Peter Rashford and Hoan Masso. There are 38 participants, and this is the link, so the, sh the slides will be shared at, at the end, so you have a bunch of links that you'll find that allow you to get more information. So this is the link to the community group and all their resources. So, so far there's been specification work and implementation work done as part of OGC testbeds uh, in past years. And just recently, there's been an implementation done as a community plugin in GeoServer. Uh, I've been, I'm working on the map server and GDAL OGR implementations. I'll talk about them a little later. Uh, OGC testbed 15 is coming, so there are players who are going to continue to play in OGC on that spec. And uh, this September, uh, Peter and others from the community group are going to be meeting at the W3C TPAC, which is essentially for people familiar with OGC. It's like the OGC TC meeting, so it's the technical something committees of, of the W3C. So they're discussing, continuing to discuss the spec at W3C this, this summer, this fall. And future activities, there's more implementations coming. Uh, one of the big items, and now I'm talking about the work, the community group, but one of the big things is there's no buy-in from the browser people yet. They don't, they're not convinced yet. So there are, as you'll see, there are a couple of uh, implementations from the geo side, from the geospatial side, but the browser people are, is where some of the work needs to be done to have a, reference implementations in browsers. They call them origin trials, essentially. That's how you can have new features in browser being tested by a set of beta testers. So that's the type of stuff that's going to be coming as well. And eventually, once the spec is mature enough, we can hope that there would be a joint standard that would be developed between W3C and OGC if it does solve the need that it's trying to solve. So. On the spec itself now, so I said there's two parts to it. There's the map HTML element that you place in your HTML page. And uh, essentially the map HTML element, it's built on top of the old, for those who have done HTML stuff, uh, there used to be a map HTML element that allowed us to have uh, clickable areas and shapes uh, way back when. Uh, and it's been forgotten. I don't think anyone uses that anymore. But it's, it's leveraging that, so it's extending that by adding new properties like projection, latitude, longitude, which is the, the initial view, uh, zoom, width and height, which existed before. It's adding the ability to control, to add or remove map controls, adding layer references, which are links to MapML documents, which is the second part of the spec, where the server tells the browser how to deal with the, the, map, the, the map data. And finally, the areas they used to exist before, they were the clickable shapes that we had in HTML maps in, in the original versions of uh, HTML. So that's what the hello world would look in, in, in you know, the, the, map, the map element that you'd have in a, the simplest example. So you have your map tag with your projection, initial view, and then a reference layer which, to which you give a, a label, and then an, a, a URL that points to either points to a static document that contains the MapML language that I'm going to show later, or it could be a pointer to a GeoServer instance or a MapServer instance that, as I'm going to show you later, is able to automatically generate the, the, the contents that the browser needs there. But you as a web developer don't need to worry. All you need to know is the entry point, feed it there, and then, it's, then your map is added to your, to your uh, HTML. So no more JavaScript syntax. That's all you need to put in your HTML page to be able to instantiate a map of this specific side, size with this data layer in it. If you have multiple layers, you'd have multiple layer items that you add in your map object. And then, actually, if I click on this one, I'll show you what it looks like. If the internet works for me. 
So this is uh, actually the current implementation since the browsers don't support MapML yet. It's, uh, they call that a, a polyfill in the web world. So polyfill comes from the word polyfilla, which is kind of patching stuff, you know, uh, plaster to patch wall, walls. So essentially the polyfill, uh, there's a polyfill built on leaflet. So right now there's a leaflet viewer that implements the MapML. So that's how we're testing this, the implementation on the server side. And because I have three layers, so I can turn layers on and off. So that's what my... So I have essentially told my browser I want to be able, to, I have three layers that I want to control independently. And this is a, a browsable map, essentially. That's a WMS map behind the scenes, so that's why it's taking a bit of time. And it's not beautiful, it's just a test map. So this, these couple of lines of HTML produce this map. And the idea is that if the spec was supported by all browsers, it would behave the right way on any type of device. Now that's, well, that's all there is to know about the map, the map element, essentially. Now, the, the magic happens when the browser provides the right information, the, the, when the server provides the right information to the browser. So are we doing for time? Good. So MapML is a XHTML or micro XML encoding for map information. So it, for a given data layer, it will provide um, a map extends supported projection. That's the type of stuff you're used to put in your map file as well, or that you would find in a WMS get capabilities, for instance. Then you're going to have uh, it will. S the current version of the spec will support the following types of uh, data sources: so tile sources, uh, like a WMTS or XYZ layers, that type of stuff. Image sources, so a WMS essentially a request that returns a complete map image. So it can be WMS, but it could be anything else because the MapML syntax allows you to code. Uh, different formats for the URLs. Um, query sources, so essentially that's used for get feature info in the WMS, so it's essentially going to return you vector, a vector response of whatever was found at that location. And feature sources, which is like WFS, so if you wanted to provide vector data to your browser, you would do that with a feature source in your MapML. And uh, there's also, well, provisions for dealing with legends, copyright attribution, that type of stuff. And the MapML also provides a DOM-friendly encoding for geometries. It looks pretty much like WKT, except that the way WKT passes coordinates is by sending a set of X and Y, X and Y, X and Y. And this is not DOM-friendly, so the way the syntax works for, this, for the MapML is to set pairs of coordinates so that they can be accessible through the DOM in a more easy way. Um, so it's... it's in this, the, that's one exception where it's kind of reinventing a new syntax again for geometries, but it's a requirement to be, to be dumb friendly. So this is what the MapML syntax looks like. It's kind of messy visually, but keep in mind that you're not writing that as a human. It's the software that creates that code and sends it to the web browser. So essentially, it's a HTML-like type of syntax. Uh, it's, it's, it's providing, it's setting a, a set of input variables and then it's doing variable replacements in the URL. So in this case it's WMS, so you'll see width equals W, and W is, here is defined as an input of type width. So those types are defined in the spec, so type width, type location, there's a number of types of inputs that are defined in the MapML spec that allow you to control the behavior of your, uh, well, of your URLs and then the behavior of your map. So essentially, the, the server tells the browser through that syntax how to deal with that data source. So this is a, a WMS example. This is a tile map example. So you'd have your tile map URL with Z, X, Y. So this is what the MapML looks like for this. 10 minutes. And um, so I won't go over the whole spec, just showing you examples, uh, just so that you have an idea. Essentially, what you need to know is that the server normally takes care of that. Whether it's GeoServer or MapServer, they will build that and return it to the browser through the link that you provided in the map tag. So current Im implementations of MapML, uh, on the browser side, there's this leaflet-based polyfill that I mentioned. So it's a leaflet. Uh, I'll have a slide on it that shows how to install it if you want to use it. But essentially, it's a leaflet implementation. 
Uh, George Manson University, as part of the test beds, implemented their own map, map clients as well. But unfor unfortunately, there's still no native browser implementation. So that's on the to-do list. That's uh, one of the things that uh, Peter and the, the, the people in the, the community group are working hard on uh, together with the W3C people. On the server side or the tools toolkit side, uh, there's a community plugin in GeoServer. I'm working on the map server implementation. It's RFC 123 if you want to keep track of it. Uh, there's also going to be a, an implementation in Gildal and OGR, essentially implementing the vector feature format so that uh, actually we can use it for queries in map server, so we don't need to re-implement it. Plus, someone who wants to take a data source and publish it as a static MapML source can just OGR to OGR and generate the right contents. Cubeworks has an implementation on the server side. And Etcheri, which is a company in the Ottawa area, also has an implementation in their Gnosis uh, server. And finally, there's a set of services that uh, and our Natural Resource Canada are serving at, uh, at this URL. So the, I talked about the leaflet-based uh, polyfill, the, the, the implementation of the spec. So the way to use it, it's a, there's a Bower package for it. Bower is a package manager for JavaScript libraries. So just Bower install a web map in a folder, and you're, you're going. Then you instantiate, uh, instantiate it in your web page. So you need those two lines to uh, invoke it and instantiate it, and then uh, you plug your map element and your map shows up. It's as simple as that. Uh, the idea is that when there's native browser support, you can get rid of this and all you need is the map element. The map server implementation is, is uh, well, it's work done under RFC 123. It's not been committed to the master version of map server yet. Uh, it's part of my, Git, my personal GitHub fork. Uh, you can get the, the code from there. Uh, it is working, like I've, I've shown you one example of a map that was uh, driven by map server. Essentially, the way it's been implemented, it's the usual map server URL with your map file reference, and it's kind of an extension to a WMS. That the, way we, the way we've done it is as an extension to WMS. So if you have a WMS service or a WMS map file, you just need to use request equals get map ML and specify a WMS layer name, and it's going to return the contents that the browser needs to be able to do its job. And, or specify, and specify which MapML projection code you want to use. MapML defines four common projection codes. It's, it does not support all the EPSG database like WMS does. It's trying to simplify the problem for the web browser. Only a few projection, projections need to be uh, supported. So that's what is added to Map Server to be able to support it. There's code behind the scenes, but from the user standpoint, that's all there is to it. So when you add a reference to a Map Server layer, in a MapML tag in HTML, well, you'd put your map equals, and then those three arguments, that's what you put in the map HTML element. The OGR driver is going to be a method to output OGR vector features as MapML using that syntax that I said, that exp that I said is a DOM-friendly um, way to encode the geometries. Uh, it's not done yet. It's going to come in the file. And uh, on the next steps, well, on the community working group, as I said, they need to work on getting the browser support from the browser people and then some implementations, uh, but also get standards people from the W3C side and from the GIS side, from us. Uh, they want to have feedback on the spec, on what could be done better, whether this really fills a need or not, all of that stuff. Um, help on the DOM API development, because many of you are DOM experts and might have uh, feedback on the best way to handle stuff. You can help by spreading the world. After seeing this talk, you can see, well, you know, there might be people interested in the spec that could join. Um, so uh, Natural Resource Canada is planning to deploy production services using the Map Server and GeoServer implementations, which they funded. So that's part of the, the trick and the reason why I'm here today. Um, then get browser support implementation and uh, hopefully more implementations coming from the community after there's traction around the spec. So uh, have a look, join the community working group if you want, implement uh, the spec, spread the word, that's what we want. Uh, a bunch of useful links, they're going to be in the slides about uh, where the examples are, where the spec is, all the information. And that's it for my quick talk uh, on this. We have time, I think, for a few yeah. more questions. Yep.
Any questions? Yep. Vector tiles could be supported as another type of source. Uh, as I've shown, vector tiles, like the URL to invoke a vector tile would just be a URL like this, similar to this one. So from the MapML syntax standpoint, it's supported. It's just a matter of the viewer or the browser knowing what to do with it. So it's a matter of implementing it. But it will actually this is something that's being discussed in the community group right now they they want they, they talked about vector tile they talked about utf grid which some of you may have used in the past so they're wondering should we add provision for that in the spec but there's not much to add really because the way the spec has been defined will allow supporting that it's more a matter of saying as a web browser you have to support vector tiles as well yeah yeah other questions yep That's a, very, that's a very good question. Uh, it started in 2014, so it's been five years already in the works. I think what, the reason why I'm here today and the reason why I gave you a high-level talk like this, I've been in this talk answering my own questions when, he t when Peter told me about this. I was like, okay, why do we need that? How does it work? Give me the high-level, the, the thousand feet view of, of it. So I think we need more of these so that there's traction, that there's people who are gonna start using it and start pushing for it. Uh, I, I believe there is you in a simple HTML map element like this. That's why I'm here. Uh, but then, yes, it's going to take time. I, I see that almost like the WMS, the first version of WMS at the end of the 90s, 20 years ago. Uh, you know, it, it was a first attempt at doing something, and today I think it served us well. So two years, five years, hopefully not 10. Uh, if in a couple of years we can have a map element like this in the HTML browsers that makes the life of web developers easier, I think we'll have achieved something. And you'll have heard of it for the first time here. <laughs> you and then you. Uh, did you speak directly to browser rendering? Yeah, the question was, did we speak directly to browser vendors about implementation? I did not myself, because I'm on the implementation side in Map Server, but Peter Rashford and the other members of the community group, they work at W3C with them. So they're, face, they're, they're meeting face-to-face -face in September as part of a larger technical committee meetings of, the, of the, the W3C. So they are there, they're talking with them. Uh, their, their strategy... Not sure, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to tell, we can close the mic, but the idea is if there's enough support for it on the GIS side, they're thinking that then the browsers are going to have to follow. So, well, I mean, all, all three browsers, that was a question. Actually, the major browsers are open source implementations, so do we need to start doing open source development against the browsers to start pushing for this? That might be a way to go. You had a question? showing this is the location of our store or these are all the stores around the world of this brand uh, and you have add, you are actually adding the, the base map as well is there a simple way of adding say give me any world map any google map whatever open street map and put a point here or here and that is a question that has come up in the community group and there has been a debate of okay the should there be a, a set of default maps so that you don't even need to provide a layer, you can just provide the points that are going to go on top? So that's, that's been debated, and then there's arguments of, you know, is there a risk that then, uh, you know, Chrome would only support Google Maps, and then another browser would only support another source? There's that risk, so, but then uh, you could... Then do you care? <laughs> If you don't provide a layer, you probably don't care. All you need is a base map, you're right, yeah. So, but th this is the type of questions that have been, so the way the community group works, they, they use a GitHub uh, repository to discuss the spec. So they bring up issues as a GitHub issue and then they discuss them. And there's one issue exactly about this question. So if you wanna pitch in, you're welcome. Uh, it's, you'll find it in, in the list of links, the, the GitHub repository for the spec. I know there were more hands and I forgot about them, so please raise your hand again. On the 
HTML site. Definition of the layer on the HTML site. Well, you could, you, this could be a static file on the same server that you will refer to just like a CSS, just like an HTML page refers to a CSS. So and I, now I'm answering myself the question, I guess you could also have a block inside your HTML that allows you to instantiate that. Maybe, but having it as a separate file is not too big a deal. It could be static, it doesn't have to be dynamic. That's the idea actually. One of the design principles of the spec so far has been it has to work with dynamic and static contents. It doesn't have to rely on any server-side stuff. So if you're, if you're able to export your stuff as a snapshot or something, it can work with static fi files as well. You had a question? And, uh, probably go into much details, but maybe, you know, so does the specification also define events on the thing? So is there an on Zoom and event that the JavaScript on the main page can use? Very good question. I did not look, did not notice that there might be provision for that, but since it's it's trying to be DOM friendly, any type of way to deal with events like in a, in a, an HTML page normally should should apply to this. So onload and that type of stuff might work as well. But I I'm not the expert there. Uh, that's a good question. But the idea is that if you want to. In, uh, interact with the map with custom stuff, you would do it through the DOM. No longer with the leaflet or open layers, but you would use JavaScript code that plays with the DOM to change the look of the map or change the, the, the CSS that's applied to the features that are your points on the map and that type of stuff. More questions? Actually, we can discuss that. Uh, there's well, there's no, no, no other talk to go to, so it's, it's almost 6 o'clock for those who want to go for the beer. There's going to be a map server, birds of a feather, gathering here in this room after, so that's, we can discuss. The, there's no set agenda for the buff, it's just let's get together and chat about whatever question you have about map server, uh, meet the developers type of thing. So, and if you have questions, you can, uh, if you're interested or have questions, you can email me or Peter. Uh, the slides are going to be available through the conference website um, and I'm sure Peter would be thrilled to hear interest from people who want to contribute to the spec on various aspects, even if it's just feedback. It doesn't have to be code, but knowing what the community, th what does the community think of this? Is this solving, a, you know, is this going to be useful, make your life easier? Of course, as GIS experts, maybe you don't see, need it as much as the, the normal, the, the average web people would find use for that, but... Anyway, so thanks a lot, and uh, yeah, the buff is going to start in a few minutes.